Hi, this is Andy from New Mac Products once again. Going to be demonstrating the installation of the Inverd Mini Drop Forward, also compatible with the Empire Axe or an Inverd Mini using the Empire Axe uh, Relay ASA. So, to start off with, take a look at what you're getting with the Inverd Mini package. You get the Drop Forward by itself, then a little pack here with some uh, hardware and O-rings. Take a closer look. So you have these two set screws, two very small bearing balls, and then these two O-rings which are used to seal the uh, air transfer ports. Now these O-rings are the same size as the stock parts, whereas these ones inside this bag here marked spare, those are uh, one size larger and one size smaller. You may need those depending on uh, marker tolerances, but we're including them anyway just in case you do need them. Also located inside the drop fort itself are two new set screws right there. To complete the installation, you will need a set of Allen wrenches. You shouldn't need anything else, but you will definitely need those. The first step of the installation is to remove the grip panels entirely from the gun. Uh, you don't necessarily have to remove them entirely, but it does certainly help. So, using an Allen wrench, loosen all of the uh, screws that hold the grip panels onto the marker, like so. And once the grips are free, take them and set them aside. Now, you will need to remove the stock ASA from the gun. So, you will need another Allen wrench, different than Allen wrench, loosen these two uh, lock screws that are in the frame, slide off the stock ASA. Oops, loosen them more. Slide off the ASA. Now, you can remove these screws entirely. These are too long, they will not work with the drop forward. You shouldn't throw these out because you may want to revert to the stock setup in the future. So I suggest keeping them in a safe place for future use if necessary. Now take note that there is an O-ring located between the transfer tube and the uh, regulator by itself. This, in this case, the, uh, the O-ring stayed inside the little hole, so uh, make sure you realize that there has to be a gasket in between those two. I'm going to leave that in there because the O-ring is probably still good. Now the instruction sheet that you received with the drop forward will help. It shows you diagrams that show exactly how things need to go together, but that's what I'm going to be explaining right now. The instructions recommend you take the drop forward by itself, slide it onto the frame. First, you need to open up the bag and remove all of these parts from the inside. These parts will be used to mount the drop forward onto the marker. Now these two O-rings are the stock sizes, which is a size 9. Uh, that's the same thing that you just had on there. I'm going to place one inside of the drop forward. and push that up against there. Now you see there's a gap in between. That gap is undesirable. So with your hand, you have to manually loosen up the transfer tube until the drop forward sits flush with the frame. Now right now it's sitting flush, so I'm going to tighten it gently right about there. Now with the drop forward mounted up against the frame, you will take these two very small bearing balls and drop them into these empty holes and located inside the frame itself. I want to get a closer view on that. Take the ball and drop it in the hole. Now the new set screws that you received with the drop forward will be used to tighten down the outside of the bearing balls. You need to only tighten them hand tight, just enough pressure to keep the drop forward mounted. So now the drop forward is securely mounted, and make sure that the transfer tube is tightly uh, pushing against the drop forward. You want the gasket seal to be formed. So at this point the drop is mounted on side of the marker. You still need to take the stock ASA and mount it onto the drop forward. 
keep in mind there are two screws that are pre-installed inside the drop floor. You'll use these to uh, mount against the uh, stock dovetail rail. The two screws located in the top of the rail will need to be reset so that they are sticking out approximately halfway. This is uh, described in the manual and that's also a picture of it included in the instructions. Take an o-ring if you don't already have one inside there. There has to be an o-ring in between the drop forward and the ASA. And push the two up against each other. And you may need to wiggle it back and forth to get the boss to fall down in. There it is. And now you will tighten the two set screws and drop forward which will tighten the ASA onto the drop forward and create the necessary seal. You may have to adjust this in a moment. So now everything is put together. You will need to test it out still. Keep in mind there is a small, very, 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 very small gap in between the regulator and the drop. This is acceptable, however, you can adjust this at your leisure to get it down to a smaller gap, but a, a very small gap is acceptable. The most important thing is that the air, uh, the air transfer seals are made, and that should be the way it is. So now, you'll need a tank, and you'll need to test it out to give it a test. It's pressurized, there are no leaks. Now, at this point, if you have a leak, you'll have to do some troubleshooting. There's two possible situations. One is that there's a leak between the frame and the drop forward. If that's the case, it's a very easy thing to do. First, let me depressurize this. If you have a leak between the frame and the drop forward, loosen the two screws that mount inside of the frame. Now the drop forward is loose. Take the transfer tube and screw it out an additional quarter of a turn. That should be enough uh, to put force on the o-ring. Now tighten the screws back up and your leak should be solved. If that's not the case then you'll have to do it again. Now the troubleshooting for the regulator end is a little bit more complicated because you'll have to remove the reg entirely and go back a couple steps. So let me remove that. If you have a leak, it usually means that the screws aren't screwed up all the way, so you'll have to unscrew them very slightly. Now when you unscrew the two set screws located in the dovetail mount, it should allow the regulator to get sucked up toward the drop forward a little bit tighter. And that's what you want. You, you want to minimize the gap in between the two. So be sure that you have the o-ring located on there. Put the two back together and tighten it back up. This is the difficult end to troubleshoot, but you shouldn't uh, have much trouble as long as the uh, screws are located at the correct height inside, the, inside of the uh, stock dovetail. When troubleshooting the pressure connection, it may be necessary to use uh, any of the spare o-rings that come with the drop forward. Again, they are one size larger and one size smaller. This is a size 10, and the smaller one is a size 8. Uh, these uh, sometimes help with the loose-fitting connections in there. Every gun is different, so you never really know what will work and what won't. That's why the O-rings are provided. But ideally, you should not have to use those. You should be able to use the stock O-rings and have everything work just fine. Okay, that just about covers everything. So. Once again, thanks for watching, and if you need any help installing this piece, especially with some of that troubleshooting, then don't be afraid to let us know through an uh, email, which is on our website, or find us on the forums, or post here, or do any of the above. That's it.